Good evening, everybody. I want to welcome you here. Um, thanks for coming out. Uh, tonight, we have information that we'd like to present and really be very succinct in communication with your children's academic preparedness, planning, and course decisions. And we want to make sure that not only are we working with the students and informing them, but including parents in this as well. My name is Paul Peterson. I'm the principal here at Eau Claire Regis for 7th or 6th through 12th grade. And um, tonight's meeting is very informational. We are going to record it. Our, our goal here is to not only be live here tonight, but to put this out onto the Regis website for other families to be able to have access to it as well. As we continue to take a look at what we are as a school for our children every day, a lot of us have conceived ideas as to what we remember, and we might know that it is continuing to change today, but I think the thing that is maybe most awe-striking is the speed with which changes are still coming at us. We pride ourselves in a very traditional, authentic, in-person, uh, Catholic school education. We believe in that. We deliver that. But with that, we also know that we have to be other things. As we have students and families that have unique interests, and by the time students get into high school, there are many different options that Ms. Mockler is going to present to us here today. My apologies for being in such a small room. We don't always know how many people will show up for meetings like this. Um, so I'm, I'm glad we have as many as we do. Unfortunately, our auditorium was being used by play practice. So this is kind of the best setting we have here where we have projection and an ability to record it and have it be kind of a, a smaller intimate space. Certainly it's going to be better than being in a gymnasium for this. Um, with that being said, I'd like to start this meeting here with, in prayer. So if you join with me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Good and gracious God, this time of year we think of all the things that we should be thankful for. We take a moment today to give thanks for the blessings that you have given us. Thank you for our friends, our families, for laughter, for sunshine, for the gentle rains, the beautiful skies, may we always see the blessings in our lives and take time to appreciate them. Amen. In the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. That's wishful thank you when to say rain, okay? We're going in that direction. Um, again, thank you for being here. Uh, I think it's really important that we understand with our children going through middle school and going in the high school phases of life to best understand the different options, whether it's dual credit, whether it's on campus, off campus, if it's um, an electronic curriculum that's being provided, is this a distance learning class that our children have an opportunity to do? There's a whole myriad of different ways with which education is provided today, and Regis is right in the game, okay? But I think maybe we just in the last few years have not well communicated that as much as we should have. So today we're in a spot where I think we're going to pick up the loose ends and we're going to try to make sure people are informed. Please, as you talk with other Regis families and you see them and you interact with them, let them know that you're part of this meeting and let, let them know that we're planning on putting this meeting onto the Regis website. And we'll continue to have in-person meetings. I don't know if we'll do another one at the end of this year or not, but certainly going into next year for sure. Um, just making sure that we kind of have people feel like they're fully and completely understanding the different types of classes that we have, opportunities for our children to take. And in some cases, it can arrive a student at an ability to maybe have achieved an academy through a CBTC offering by the time they're done with high school, a certificate of sort. We have the ability for our students to participate in dual credits. We have high school seniors right now that when they graduate this year, how many? 20, couple that have 24 credits. 24 credits already. And again, these are opportunities um, that I feel like we can just get a little bit better at communicating. So 
I'm going to turn this over to Ms. Mockler, and thank you again for being here, and um, thank you. All right. Um, well, I'm Mrs. Mockler. Some of you remember me as a teacher, so I taught at IC for eight years, and then moved over to the middle school, and now I'm working my way into administration. Um, Christy Paul is in the back of the room, who's our guidance counselor, and Ms. Sturz, who's the dean of students, just kind of walked out. Um, but this has kind of been my pet project all year long. So streamlining our classes that we offer our students and making sure that kids understand that they have a ton of different options um, going into the school year. So I've already met with all of your kids and so they should have come home with kind of a course schedule. I've met with a lot of parents one-on-one -on -one to help them plan out. Um, ideally, if I can meet with every single student individually, that is my goal. Um, just because of the fact that I can kind of figure out exactly what they want to do and I can help them get into it to, you know, I had one senior come to me and say, man, I'd really like to take sign language. And I said, done, I got you a class. Um, so the opportunities that are out there right now are kind of crazy. And they really, really opened up in the last, probably not even a month, when we got approval to do all academies. So before that, um, you may have heard, especially if you have older um, children that have gone through that we've always had the Regis Healthcare Academy. So that's kind of your med term and anatomy phys. We offer those right on campus here in Regis. It was our Regis Healthcare Academy. And that was it. Um, as, of, as of actually this summer, we now have about 48 academies that are open to our students. Um, we got permission to put our kids in every single one of them. And where it becomes cool is for those kids that I can kind of point back to Mr. Zane in the back of the room. So Zane, again, will graduate um, with about 20-some uh, CBTC credits. But had he been able to start as a sophomore in his exact program, he would have graduated from Regis with his high school diploma and his associate's degree from CBTC. Um, and so it's kind of one of those things where we're not pushing kids to make a decision, because let's be honest, most of us as adults didn't go into our initial career path. Um, where we're not pushing kids to know exactly what they want to do, we're trying to encourage them to identify kind of what their goals and their talents are, or what their strengths are, and then kind of guide them. And so no longer will one freshman schedule look exactly like another freshman schedule, or one sophomore schedule look exactly like a sophomore schedule. And if you come into the office and meet with myself, or with Ms. Paul, or with Ms. Sturz, we're going to all do everything we can from here on out to make sure that we kind of identify the path that's right for your child. So I'm going to kind of walk you through a few different things um, just that your, your child may have talked about that you wouldn't have known. So we kind of already talked about the rigor. Um, my biggest pet peeve when I started this year and started working with the high school students was when I would see a senior student who had two study halls, a TA position, um, like two, three, four periods during the day where they weren't in academic classes. Um, and I put a kibosh on that immediately. Um, and we're no longer allowing that. So much to the disdain of a couple of our seniors who come in and say, I would like off for period one, three, five, and an early release. I say, no, go back to the drawing board, come up with a new plan. Um, so when we look at it, um, this is kind of our goals. So, and this is gonna be in that academic and career planning guide too. But it's important to you as a parent to know what they have to have to graduate. Um, and in the past, these were all pretty much set. So the kids had to have certain classes. Now what we're doing is we're kind of understanding that while they still take English 9, 10, and 11, sophomore or senior English can be um, many different ways. So we can go to the university and take our English class. We can go to CBTC to take our English class. Uh, we have English offerings on campus that can give kids six um, college credits, um, which is through Stevens Point. So we now are kind of recognizing different, um, different paths that we can have it in um, that kids can follow. So our goal is in ninth grade to kind of identify where the student's strengths are, by 10th grade to kind of identify um, general kind of career goals, by 11th grade to develop kind of a career plan, and then by 12th grade, and I loved how um, a superintendent put it to me a couple weeks ago. He said, um, we got to start thinking of schools as K-11 schools with 12th grade being us preparing the child for whatever path they want to take. Um, and the more that we can focus on that 12th grade year, setting them up for success, whether they're going to a technical school 
or a four-year school or the military or whatever path they have using that last year of high school to really boost up what they're going to need to be successful so that's kind of where that um, goes now our math pathways if you saw your child's um, uh, selection for their, their course selection contract you would have seen this math pathways and the science pathways depending on um, where the students come in they're going to come in as a freshman at either an algebra one or a geometry level so kids can take algebra one um, in their eighth grade year um, and that's a testing kind of thing so we don't ever move the kids into that in, unless they're really able to do it um, and from that point on it kind of spider webs out into all the different course tracks that they can take and I will tell you I now have quite a few juniors and seniors who went here and then jumped all the way over here and are now taking quite a few classes at the university um, or at the technical college so a lot of these classes while we offer them in-house and they're fantastic classes if a child wants to start taking those um, college level classes and getting the dual credit we can kind of start getting them into that after that pre-calc pre class. And the same is going to kind of apply to our science pathways. Um, and again, I, you know, we've had very small physics classes the last few years. And before I met with the students, I had just gotten a confirmation email from the University of Minnesota where they said, hey, make sure you tell your high school juniors and seniors that if they want to go into engineering, if they want to go into any of the biomedical, they're required to have a uh, physics class before they graduate from high school. So let me tell you, schedules started changing really fast um, because all of a sudden the kids realized that classes that maybe they weren't going to take were going to become requirements for them to take. Same, um, another example that I kind of push with them is the Spanish. Um, we only require two foreign language credits, but that's fine. A lot of universities are looking for that third credit now. Um, back to that math pathways, we only require three math classes to graduate. A lot of universities are looking for our seniors to have a math class their senior year. Um, and so I usually tell them, make sure you're putting that in um, and not stopping at that three year mark. And now this is kind of, I'm going to just, and I know it's hard to see, but I just kind of wanted you to see what these schedule variations look like. So when I talk about every student schedule looks different, it truly does starting their freshman year. So here you have a student who is taking uh, physical life science. They're taking um, algebra one. They're getting in their Spanish. Um, so they're, and they're taking either a band or a choir, which it takes up two periods during the year. And now you have another student who's a freshman who's in geometry, biology, getting an art credit out of the way, getting his health and bio out of the way. So all those requirements that you're going to have, but all of a sudden they start looking different and they'll start on different paths depending on what classes they took their freshman year. And then you'll see it gets even more extreme when you get into the 10th grade. And one of the reasons I love these ones is you still have one that's taking biology and their geometry. You have another one who's in Spanish 3, Algebra 2, um, Chemistry. And then you look at the third one, and he's already in CVTC. So his two credits in the morning, those classes, it's actually a sophomore in high school who enrolled in IT Academy. And so his two first hours of the day are already taking his dual credits. Um, and he's one that if he stays on the same path, will have that associate's degree when he graduates. And then by the 11th grade year, they're becoming even more diverse. Um, the student over here, the reason I chose this one is you'll see that he has, um, he has an English class, American literature right here. But he's got a CVTC English class also in the same semester because he wanted to knock out one more English credit and not take it his senior year because he wants to max out one of the academies next year. So we planned at his last year or his last semester of his junior year that he'd be able to double up on his Englishes so that he could get into his academy next year. And then by the time we're in our senior year, and these are three schedules going into next year. So this one right here is one showing everything that you can get in-house at Regents. So this child will not leave campus at all during the day, but still has calculus, has AP U.S. History, has AP Chemistry, 
has UW Stevens Point English 101 and 102, which is that six credit um, English class that they can take here, um, and then a German 5. Everything that's on there is here at, uh, here at Regis. This one is at the university all day long, with the exception of they come back for their religion classes. But otherwise, and this particular student has already maxed out the amount of um, college credits that are under early college, and now she's in her own paying form because of the fact that she's at like 24. Um, and then this one is one that's going to CBTC. So they have their Regis Academy, which is their healthcare academy, but then they also have other CBTC. Specifically, this is a student who's going into nursing, so she's starting her nursing classes already. Um, and so that's where those pop up on the screen. So as far as courses that are offered specifically at Regis, we have Honors Biology, which is through Viterbo. We have AP um, classes, which is AP Chem and AP US History. Um, I'm also putting a couple of our seniors into um, AP Lit, but that's going to be through Wisconsin Virtual School. Um, we have our UW Oshkosh Health 106. We have our Regis Healthcare Academy, which is the med term in anatomy. And then the distance learning, which is calculus, um, English 101, 102, intro to social, intro to psych. And then we are working right now to get three more. We're looking to get our engineering class as a transcripted credit class. Um, we're looking at switching over biology, on biology to AP biology. And our art teacher today just informed me that she's taking the training to be able to offer AP art upstairs. So that'll be another AP class that we add in a different kind of area. So the CS10 distance learning, I'm yep. assuming that's virtual classes. That's actually in our distance learning lab. And okay. all of these classes, um, they're distance learning, but you have a set class period and you're in, you have a set instructor. Okay. So they're required to sit down in class, the instructor comes on, um, and then they go through the class. And I can tell you uh, a perfect example, this class right here, they had class on Friday. Of course, Regis doesn't. Uh, so we had a few students that decided not to show up at their class on Friday because we were off. And so the instructor uh, emailed me this morning and said, please contact these students and remind them they're in a university class and they don't get to miss class. Um, and so it was a good wake up call for those kids because they had been told last week that they had to go to class, but they decided they weren't going to go to class since we just didn't have it. So those are the kind of lessons that are kind of nice to be able to teach kids when they're still in high school um, because they learn early on uh, what you, what's appropriate and what's not. Um, so these are kind of the academies that I was talking about. So these are the academies that kids can start taking their freshman year in high school. So freshman all the way to the senior year, and these are just some of the ones that we have right now. So for example, I have one student right now just registered for CNA. I have two students registered for the EMT. I have one student who's registered for general studies. I have three in IT. I have three in welding. Um, and so they're kind of all over the board already with it just coming out for the first time for us. And if you haven't done this yet, play with this a little bit with your son or daughter. And if you go to this website and click on it, you're going to see where it talks about the high school academies. And it's kind of cool because you can go down here and you can look at the different terms. You can look at the status. So always go to open because those are the ones available. And I'll leave it on all locations right now. But you can see that there's all of these different options on here that kids can take. Um, one of them that just blows my mind right now is this one right here that's called College Transfer. And to give you an idea of some of the things that are out there, so this one right here is open to juniors and seniors. It's, it's one that primarily seniors go into, but it's um, the University of Wisconsin system, so all the way from Stout to Madison, agreed to identify 27 college credits that if a student goes through this academy, they will immediately transfer those 27, or 27 credits um, and start the student off as a sophomore. So that's a year of college that they could have gotten before they even left. Um, and it's one that kids can take virtually. It's ones that uh, they can go in person part of the time. But the crazy thing about this 27 credit academy is any of these academies, just is for pricing wise in your brain, any of these academies are what we call 60-40. So Regis will pay 60 
families pay 40%. So this whole entire academy with the um, 27 credits cost just over $5,000 for the whole cost. Um, well, the state of Wisconsin right now said we're going to give a grant for it, so they cut the cost in half, so it's like $2,600 um, for a full year of college. And then you think about, we just pay 60% of that, you pay 40% of that, and I tell the students, you're talking significant money right there. Um, anybody that knows how much a year of college costs in one of the Wisconsin school systems. And so some of these academies, when you start looking at them, and you can see how many credits um, they are. And like I said, this is an awesome one just because it's a guaranteed transfer for any of our school, um, state schools. But the other thing, if your child goes out of state, you can look at the courses and see they're all kind of those general studies classes that are the ones that are most likely to transfer to just about any school. Uh, so your econ, your, your English classes, your statistics, chemistry. So um, if you haven't done this yet, I really encourage you to go and play around on this because I even talked to some of my uh, freshmen, my incoming freshmen, and they said, there's nothing there for us. And I said, oh yeah, there is. And it's, you can go on there and see they'll have, um, if you have a freshman or sophomore, you can go on there and just look up um, online. And you can say, okay, what are some online options that my child could do um, just from home? And then you see, oh, okay, yeah, look, they still could do a three credit English class. They still could do a three credit intro to social class. So there's still those general, or the English comp class. Um, so there's still a lot of opportunities for you to get those college credits from a young age online. Um, so kind of peek at that when you have time. Yeah. So these are good at any University of Wisconsin school? Or not well, these are CBTC. So that one that I just showed you, that one that's called College Transfer, that College Transfer one is one specifically that the University of Wisconsin colleges came together to identify those credits. And so those ones are, that's why it's called college transfer, because it's a guarantee that those will transfer. I have not had any problem with my students who take like uh, intro to English comp, statistics, psych, soch, those are kind of the common ones that we teach. And they've had very, very good luck transferring those ones into their universities. So I always tell them, if you're going from uh, a technical school into a university, you always want to stick with the general study kind of classes and not go too far out from that because those are the ones that transfer the best. Christy, another question. Yeah. Let's say your daughter wants her okay, my daughter wants to go to Madison. Yeah. Go ahead, me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So twenty seven college credits apply to Madison. Yeah. And these are credits that apply to Regis as well. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. And these are online or part of the classroom scenario. Mm -hmm. Those ones like that transfer one is one you can do either way. You can do it as an online academy or as uh, in person. So it had like when we were looking at it, it had both um, locations that you could do it at. So let me go back to this. Um, so that one in particular, if you go down to it, it's called College Transfer. And that one has like people can go to the Chippewa Falls campus and take the classes. They can choose to take them virtually. Um, in this case, like I tell the students, please don't, you, the students have all heard me say that, please don't go onto an academy and register for River Falls. You can't make it there in time. Um, so I always tell them, kind of check out the location. And you'll notice a difference here, too. Um, this is kind of cool when you think about it. Just because online live means you actually have an instructor teaching you. So there's a difference between just a strict online class and an online live class. Because an online live class is like our distance learning classes. You actually physically have a professor. You're not just getting the assignment and doing it. So in those classes, you usually have times where you're going to log in and listen. But it's a college class. So it's not going to be Monday through Friday for an hour. It's usually like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday from this time to this time. Yeah. Yeah. So theoretically, would you take that in lieu of a... 9th or 10th grade English class? Or how you, would that work? You know what? Where you do it is like, say, um, there's one on here that's called, um, there's like English Comp 1 and 2. Okay? So those ones are perfect examples. And you'll see other um, slides in here when I talk. There's UW Stevens Point English. There's um, UWEC Writing 101 and 102 that are offered here. There's the CBTC ones. 
So the way that you count it is for every college credit, it counts as 0.25 at Regis. So they're dual credits, right? So I tell the kids, in order for it to count as a year of one of your required classes, so if you're taking classes at any of the universities or technical schools, in order for it to count for a year, you need four credits, right? So four credits of a college class equals one year of a Regis class. Um, and so most of our kids end up taking, so like the Stevens Point is a perfect example, they take 101, which is freshman English, their first semester, and then they take 202, which is sophomore English, their second semester. And they end up with six college credits, which is a year and a half here. Um, you know, Zane's taken most of his English or the last couple of years of English. Quite a few of our kids who are either at CVTC or at <coughs> university take their English classes and have it count for sure for their senior English. So instead of taking their senior English, and I'll tell you, if kids plan it out right, then as far as requirements go your senior year, you'll always have your religion requirements. And then I say, you can come. Uh, the senior schedule is kind of ideal in the fact that the required classes are always either second hour or eighth hour. And so I can plan that your required classes either fit at the very beginning of the day or at the end of the day. And then that opens them up for if they do want to register for classes anywhere else, having that time to do it. So this is just one of the options, which is your academies. And again, like I said, it's just kind of cool to see what is all out there. And a lot of these ones too, the CNA, the EMT, a lot of those are ones that are during the summer for like a week. Or they might be um, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon from 3 to 4. Um, so they don't always even hit exactly when our school hours are. Okay, so that was your academies. And then the very next option is going to be Start College Now. And that's kind of what um, Zane is under. So Start College Now, kids can do it when they're juniors or seniors. Um, and in this case, if you are eligible, you got to have a GPA of 3.0 or higher. Um, it's a 60-40. So again, we pay 60, a student pays 40. And they can go on to the CVTC, and they can kind of pick classes based on what they're interested in. So I have a student who's going to be a senior next year who wants to be a linesman. Um, it, it, it's caught his eye. It's a really high paying job. He's super stoked about it. So he actually was the one that I showed you where he took two English classes his junior year so that his senior year he can go right into the first semester of the linesman program at CVTC. So I do have a, I actually, we'll see at the end, but I think I'm up to like six students now that are part of the uh, start college now that are kind of planning out their days and saying you kind of how many credits do you have right now at CBTC? Um, I think at the start of this semester I was 19 or 20. But how many do you have this semester alone? Are you at like nine this semester? Or are you? I'm pretty close. I can't remember. I can't remember. Yeah, and then he's got a, a class or two here at Regis. So if you go in here you can see the kids it's incredibly simple you can click on this link and it's in your books too they can click on it they can register for start college now i get the um, application for the students and then i work with them to fit in whatever classes they want to take with the required classes that they still have to finish up on um, at regis and in a lot of cases we get creative about how we fit everything in um, but we we get it all so that it works pretty slick and then the other one is going to be your early college credit program. And this is strictly going to be your UW system schools. So any student, um, and this is the one that I am, I'm really, really pushing our juniors and seniors right now. Um, because it's free. And it's completely free to the families. It is 100% paid for. And the students can get 18 credits from it. So um, most of my seniors that are doing it for this next year, um, are taking um, nine credits each semester um, and they're taking very rigorous classes so they're taking the um, I have one student right now who has an upper level Spanish class she's got two biology classes and a calculus class um, so you can take um, all sorts of general studies um, I have one student right now that's at the university as a senior who's taking a bunch of criminal justice classes because that's where she wants to go um, and what she wants to do for a program I have one student who wants to go into journalism. So the last two years, instead of taking English here, she took journalism uh, classes to fulfill her um, English credits. 
The only thing is, you know, we do have these caveats. So we look at um, that 3.5 kind of as our benchmark for early college credit. So I always tell the kids, keep an eye on your GPA um, because this is the top 25% of a graduating class or it's that 3.5 or higher typically. Um, I, students know about this, so I tell them don't blow your class um, because in the event that you don't pass with a C or higher, then you have to pay the whole entire cost of the class. Um, and so we watch those pretty closely now to make sure the students are on track. Um, and like I say, we have quite a few kids that are taking advantage of the early college credit program classes. So when we look at our numbers right now, this kind of gives you an idea of where Regis is heading and the fact that we really are trying super hard to identify. Regis is not a big high school. Um, and we know that we're limiting what we can offer here on site. We have fantastic teachers and we are bringing in more and more advanced classes for our students. Um, but we also know we have a ton of awesome opportunities for them outside of Regis. So with the academies, uh, going into next year, we have 12 students enrolled in the Healthcare Academy, which is taught right at Regis. Anything with the little star here is on the Regis campus. So we have 11 at the Healthcare Academy. We have three sophomores who are taking the IT Software Development Academy. We have one um, student who will be a sophomore who's taking CNA. I have three juniors who are going into the Welding Academy. And then this one right here is kind of an interesting one too. This General Studies Academy is taught over the summer. And the student who is taking it is right now a freshman. Um, and he's not somebody who goes away for the summer. So I always tell the kids, if you're a Camp Manitou kid, if you're a kid who lives at the lake, if you, these are not going to be what you want to do over the summer. Um, because the student who's doing this, that's 15 college credits over the summer. So he's um, taking the equivalent of four cl college classes, basically in an academy setting over the summer months. Um, and he's a freshman. He's a freshman. He's going to be a sophomore. Yeah. So, um, and he's one of my, he's definitely a high flyer. So I'm, it's, it's not a perfect path for everybody, but it's an awesome path for him. Then when we look at our programs for next year, we'll have five that are enrolled at Star College now, which is CBTC. We have 11 going into the early college credit program. So that's at UW-Eau Claire. This one right here is one that we do offer, um, which is through Wisconsin Virtual Schools, and we can offer it on the Regis campus, and that's AP Lit. So for the kids that want to be able to try to take that AP exam in literature, we can still do that. Uh, CISA 10 is our distance learning calculus class, and that's taught by an instructor out of um, Spencer High School. Then we have Intro to Psych, and I actually have Intro to Soch now registered for too, and that's through CBTC. And then we have the English um, UW Stevens Point, English 101 and 102 with 13. And then the one today that said, I really want sign language. And we found her a three credit sign language class that she could go into. So it really just opens it up. And I would say, honestly, one of the parents said to me today when she was meeting me with me, and she said, I really am not sure that I like how you guys are pushing these kids into college classes so early. And what I can tell you is, um, when I took this position, I went to a Connections um, workshop, and it was with about 250 superintendents and principals from around the, and counselors from around the area. And I came back thinking, oh my goodness, I got to somehow tap into some of these programs that they're tapping into and bring them to Regis. Um, and then now when I went to the last Connections meeting with the same group of people, they all wanted to talk to me because Regis is the only school in this area that has somebody designated as the person who is just doing academic and career planning for the students. And so the counselors were saying to me, oh my gosh, I can't imagine how nice it is to only do that and not have to counsel and do ACT prep and do. And so it's one of the kind of great things about my position and the fact that I really honestly can spend the time um, to figure out what programs fit best for every kid. And I would challenge you to, to tell your child, don't plan your schedule based on your friend's schedule because you're not going to all do the same thing. So by all means, you figure out what you want to do, and then let's make them a path that, that fits that for them. Yeah. And, and just, you know, to throw it out there, at, uh, my daughter is a senior. I know there's some other people that have kids just in mm -hmm. college. And with the pandemic and that, every school she visited, 
a lot of them aren't taking ACT or SAT at all. Um, at least not, and some of them and, not at all. And yeah, I, I mean, you don't have to do it. You, you, you could do it if you score well enough. And there's a lot of them that are not taking ACTs right now. So I'm like, well, what's the, mm -hmm. what do you use to yeah. to differentiate students? Yeah. And they all said to to a school, the number one thing is like rigor of schedule yeah. throughout high yeah. school. So and just to throw that out there, because I kind of agree, it's like, yeah, you don't want to push them early to do too much and lose their childhood, but. That if you're not going to be using the SAT, ACT, this is what they're looking at. Well, yeah. and I will tell you, probably one of the, the best things that I did in my job before Mr. Cook left is Mr. Cook and I worked together to get weighted GPAs added onto the kids' as transcripts. And so if you're not familiar with weighted GPAs, um, now when a student is going off to college or they are applying for a scholarship, they can come to me and they can say, man, Mrs. Mockler took all these hard classes and I got a 4.0 and a 4.0 is great, but this school says their starting benchmark is a 4.2. And I said, that's because they're using a weighted GPA. Now let me run your weighted GPA. And it takes all of those classes from honors up. So honors, AP, CBTC, any of the UW classes, and it weights them on a five point scale instead of a four point scale. So it immediately helps the kids out when it comes to applying to colleges. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I one of probably my one of our top kids this year, she's applied to some hard schools. And uh, when we first had her GPA out, and then she came to me and said, I can submit a weighted GPA, I said your 4.0 just went to a 4.51. And I said, and it's because of the fact that she is my biology calculus. She's been taking these university classes and she now gets credit for it. But so do the kids that are taking CBTC classes. They get recognized for the, cla the fact that they're taking classes that are considered college level classes. So that was, I agree with you because right now I'm the one that submits all the common app. Um, and I tell the kids all the time, they don't need an ACT. Half of them don't need an essay. So what it's going by is that transcript. And what classes show up on that transcript when you submit it? And luckily, when you're a recommender, it asks you questions like, has this student taken rigorous classes? Has this student taken advanced classes? Where do you see? And you can kind of start to say, yes, they have. This is where they are. And so, I, you know, there's, there's benefits to it that really honestly follow them through um, their senior year when they start applying out to other places too. So yeah, anybody have any specific questions? I know I kind of talked fast. Yeah. Can I talk to you a little bit about physics? You had mentioned yeah. that if math or science, yeah. not being able to get into that program in college. So my question specifically is, yes. is it worth it to try to do physics through ECCP yeah. and then you risk not getting it and then not have it? Well, physics is a tricky one because it's one that if a student waits until they're a senior, it's only offered one period a day. It's offered seventh hour here at Regis, right? Um, and so for, for a lot of our seniors, where they kind of hit a stumbling block is that seventh hour is also when UW-Stevens Point, English 101 and 102 are offered. So I, I'm dealing with one student right now who's in that because she wants both of them so badly. And so I kind of told her, well, take the physics here and I'll make sure you get into a college level English class, but then register for, for physics on um, the UW application. So it really comes down to a physics class. They can take it here their senior year and it's still considered a rigorous science class, or they can take it as an EC ECCP. Physics are not like, especially that entry, entry level physics is not as difficult to get into at the university as some of our English classes are. So the English ones, a lot of time, they have to have multiple options for the English classes that they want to take before they can get one. Because our students register after the freshman and college register. So we kind of come in right at the end. So like when my students submit their ECCP, I always tell them, I'm like, there's three lines for classes here. I'd like you to submit 12 for me. Um, and get the approval from Regis first so that when you're sitting there trying to register for the class and it says this one's full, you go right to the next one on the list. This one's full, go to the next one. So I would say, depending on what does your child want to go into? Science. Not science of some sort. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, I would say either, either if they're not doing UW-Stevens Point, then take physics at Regis. 
if they are taking UW Stevens Point, and again, they were speaking specifically to like engineering fields, um, certain biomedical fields, like they had a, a few okay. different criteria. So my follow-up is, well, A, it's too late because they've already submitted their classes, so. To me? Yeah. It's never too late. Okay, because you, you get the, emails every year, no changes to your classes. <laughs> I know, I know, but here's the thing is, I don't think that they've ever had it to where they're meeting like one on one. So like I joked with the kids on Wednesday that I reheated my lunch four times because I just get it in the microwave and I turn around and there'd be four more kids waiting to meet and then I'd meet with them. So I would say, especially when it comes to our seniors, our seniors will tweak it until they get it what they want. And the other thing about it is our seniors who are going ECCP don't register for their classes until August. So while they turn well, in their applications right, right now, yes. yeah. So while they turn in their applications right now, uh -huh. we don't know. So usually I put the kids. So I have a perfect example. I have like four seniors that want to take calculus next year at Regis or at um, UW Eau Claire. Mm -hmm. But I put them all in calculus at Regis because mm -hmm. I said in the event that you don't get into your calc class that you want, you're still in a calc class. So you know, kind of covering both bases. So let's just say, yeah, there's nope. she doesn't take physics because yep. whatever. Yeah. So then what happens if she does want to go into one of those science programs that you like? There must be some there, sort yeah, of yeah, like, and they'll usually require it, especially because of the fact that this is something that they just sent out to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know, Christy. I, do you remember when I told you that I got the email regarding physics? I mean, it was probably it September, was, October, September, it was October, early. maybe. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So early. I mean, I would say when I met with the students and said. Hey gang, be careful about this class if it's something that you might want to go into. But that's just one university. And I'll say that a lot of the universities right now use the word recommended. And until you get something that says required, they kind of know that there's going to be some of those kids that it they couldn't fit it in. Or and it they don't have to declare right away. No. That's a, a real, it, so let's say you now you've got a senior mm -hmm. next year and she she just didn't get it. But mm -hmm. worst case scenario, she didn't get her physics. So then if she still wants to, let's just say U of M, mm -hmm. because they were one that said it, she wants to go to U of M, don't have her declare. Get her in, mm -hmm. you know, she'll apply, and then after mm -hmm. she's there and gets a semester under her, plus she'll have probably other college courses that already make her look good. Once you're in, you're you're kind of in. Okay. It it but you know, I mean, so it's not accepted to the college, it's being accepted to that particular school program. program. Like, okay. that's your yeah. program. Have her go undeclared if that is something that you're worried about. And and their counselors, they want kids. Yeah, CBGC They'll work with you right now. is begging <gasps> for kids. They have, no, we don't have workers in the trades. They want our kids so bad, they will work with these kids and universities as well. They will, especially. Uh, you know, someone who wants to be there, they'll, you know, and can prove themselves. Mm -hmm. so. For sure. Yeah, does this open up a lot of um, foreign languages then potentially too, or well, do they have to stay in the Spanish lane the until they get further? Spanish lane, the only other options, like for distance learning, we do have other options. So like even with the sign language, they technically have sign language one and two. They have um, a couple um, different French classes. We still do have German. Um, so it, it opens up a few other paths, but you always just have to make sure that they need that two full credits of a foreign language. So, you know, if they're taking a three credit uh, distance learning class, then it usually means they're going to have to take three of them because of the fact that those are usually three credit classes. So in order to get them to that two-year hump, it's usually three credits. Could you so start that early, like freshman it, That's year what I was going to say. It's something that if you started early enough, so you started as a freshman and then you were taking them back to back, um, potentially, yeah, you could do it. Yeah. Because I know, like, when I was looking and contacted um, CISA 10 about the sign language, they said, is it a student who's going to take it two consecutive years? Because if so, we want her to go through this university. But if it's just an intro to sign language, then we'll put her in this university. So they're pretty good about kind of identifying options. Any other questions that you can think of? And the other thing too is as you're planning with your son or daughter and you want like specifics, just come in and, and talk to me. Or, you know, like I said, it's been great to just meet with parents and say, what do you want to get into? What are options for you? What do I think maybe you can handle or couldn't handle right now? Because the other thing is, is we don't want to pack students 
with so much that they're burned out by the time they finish their senior year. Um, but there's easy ways for us to integrate a couple classes here or there to kind of start beefing up their um, high school experience. And then pay close attention in our, the, um, what's the other one that tells the um, prereq? For some of them were, you know. That'll say it in here. So like when you're looking at the academic guide, um, any of the classes that you see in there, if it has a prereq pre in it, so, um, you know, like Healthcare Academy is a perfect e example. In order to take the anatomy class, you have to have gotten above a C in chemistry. You know, so there's certain classes that the kids had to have been doing um, well enough in some of their early classes that they can jump into some of these programs. Yeah. If we've already turned in our class request for next year, yes, and something wasn't right, do you identify if someone is missing something? Or? I do. So I do. So even this weekend, I did tran transcript audits again on our seniors. So like, I do it pretty much with every single student who comes in and meets with me. Again, most likely it's going to be our juniors and seniors. But I would say if you have a sophomore or you have a freshman who's going to be a sophomore. There are certain classes that they can take earlier in their high school that'll be, that are required, but they can kind of knock out of the way. And so then it starts opening up a lot of options for them their junior and senior year. So like I tell our sophomore kids, take your econ class, get your business credit out of the way, business, business class out of the way. Um, I tell my juniors, take your American Gov class as a junior, don't wait until your senior year, because it's right in the middle of your day. And if you wait until you're a senior, then all of a sudden you're trying to plan around this one class in the middle of your day. So I, when I meet with the kids, every time I meet with them, I pull their transcript. And then I say, let's walk through your transcript, and I cross off what they've, what they've done and what they still need to do. And then kind of talk about the options for how to make those requirements. But then again, like this weekend, I went through every single senior transcript again and made sure that they were all on track. Um, so it's something that we watch real close. They're not going to need to make changes because literally what you've got here is like a college professor and she knows that schedule, well, she knows, so we won't even have to do it anymore. I love that you said that because I remember it'd be like, the kids would be like, oh, I want to change because I want to be with someone, you know, they want to be with their friends. So they try to make it sound like this or that, but that won't even happen in the fall because by the time I, yeah. you leave here in May, it's going to be a done deal and they're on track the, for yeah. where they need to be. The go. only tweaks that will be made are like for our kids who are taking one of the college level classes in the event that they don't get into them. But even today, you know, I've had students come in today that said, I know I submitted my schedule next week, but I thought about it a little bit more and I need to drop that one and that one and take this one and this one. I'm like, all right, come on and sit down. So I don't, I would much rather work it to the point where they have a schedule that's exactly what they want going forward. My biggest thing is I don't want all the study halls and I don't want kids to be planning their days based on this is what your freshman year in high school looks like and this is what your sophomore year in high school looks like because it shouldn't look that way anymore. It should look like this is what I want to do and so when my boys came in and said I want to be a welder and I was like yes you do let's plan it for you and it was the first time that somebody sat down with them and said you can absolutely take these classes and be on this path and that's 100% okay. Um, and so I just, you know, highly recommend to the kids that they look at it and say, where am I strongest? What do I kind of, what am I interested in? And let us plan out their schedule based on that. So there you go. <laughs> Again, if you ever have any questions, you can always call me or email me or send them with your student. And uh, we can chat then too. Good. Thank you all for coming. This is so as a mom of three grown adult children who are all $40,000 in debt, <laughs> and literally, that, that $40,000 was, it was more. But you know, all of them have, and they went to UW, Stowe, River Falls, Eau Claire, and La Crosse. That's, that's where they were, right in, you know. And they lived on campus for two years because they said, you have to live on campus for two years if you're another <laughs> town. Over forty thousand dollars in debt. This is killing me. It's killing me. I'm like, oh, but I just would have. And I remember being so confused going into college. Well, you're getting the college lesson right now. This is exactly what they'll tell you once they're in college. But now you're getting to hear this, 
And and if there's a, a child who doesn't know, that's okay too. Right. Well, and get I them think in the right classes so that if yeah. they decide, oh, now you know I do kind of want to do this. Well, and I think it. too the academies are an awesome way starting at a younger age too. You can say you might be interested in the health healthcare field, like. Let's put you in a couple of these classes and see if you still like it. You want to go into nursing? Let's put you in a couple of classes, see if you like it. Um, there's teacher ed classes that are um, synced with the university that they'll take. So there's a lot of different pathways that the students can kind of explore. And they're not out anything if they don't like it. Because instead of picking two electives that they maybe were not interested in, they can take classes to, to see if it's a career or a, um, something that they might want to go into. So it just kind of opens up a path for them. All right. Well, thank you all for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.